Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of base building in maximum raid mode. Make sure to stick around to the end, because I'm going to show you why this setting makes the plains way easier and the mountains much harder. But what is maximum raid mode? What am I talking about? Well, as part of Hilda's request, they added world modifiers. And you can see that there's a raid rate modifier, which you could set to no raids at all, eliminating them entirely, or set them to much more. This means you'll get a raid approximately every 12 minutes. First, I'll show you the aces that I built progressing naturally through maximum raid mode, which is how I learned how to survive and build these things. After I show you the bases, I'm going to teach you the basics of building them and some really important lessons you need to know in order to actually survive on maximum raid mode. Here's the first base, which was designed in the meadows and only needs to be able to survive the easy raids. Notice that there's no fancy materials or gear here. It's all about limiting the enemy's pathfinding and making sure that they have lots of layers to destroy before they get anywhere near your beds. And here we have a black forest base built on maximum raid mode. Notice all of the fallen logs. Those actually serve a purpose. They make the enemies struggle with their pathfinding. Also notice that the base itself is up in the air, off of the ground, so enemies can't get there. All enemies can do is run up these stairs. They get funneled into this area, and then you can just fight them. And here's the maximum raid base that I made for my swamps progression. This base is pretty similar to a normal base. You can see that I integrated that strategy with the stairs because enemies, Grey Dwarves really, will run up the stairs and then they can't go up those step ladders. And you always want to make sure that your spawn points are up high or in an area that it's impossible for the enemies to get to. Now, honestly, this base isn't that well defended and that's because it doesn't need to survive from the real raids. All this needs to survive is Grey Dwarf raids. And here we have a proper maximum raid mode base. This is the kind of base you'll have to make in order to survive once you can get troll raids and goblin raids because the game gets way harder once that happens. And as you can see here, this base actually got damaged in a goblin raid, but the goblins didn't get inside. And that's really the trick to surviving on maximum raid mode. It's all about giving the enemies things to destroy so that they don't get anywhere near your beds. Your beds always need to be high off the ground and set up in a way where the enemy's pathfinding cannot get there. Gaps like this are critical for that. Now, you can see just how much more elaborate this base had to get. That's all to survive the troll raids and the goblin raids, because those raids are super destructive, way more so than Grey Dwarfs. And here we have an endgame base that can even survive raids from Seekers. Believe it or not, at this point in the game, the easiest kind of defense is actually other biomes. You see how this base is built with an octagon? It actually is on the convergence point of the Black Forest, the Plains, and the Mistlands. And this is really important because the easiest way to defend against raids is with monsters from the Plains and then monsters from the Mistlands. Now that you've seen some of the raid bases, let's get into how you can actually do this yourself. There are two things that you must know in order to survive on maximum raid mode. And it all has to do with this guy. Do not kill the Elder. The moment you kill the Elder, you enable the Ground is Shaking event, which is going to send two trolls. And this event is crazy destructive, which is exactly why you shouldn't kill the Elder until your base is ready. It is a challenge to make a base that can survive these trolls. And it's all about understanding enemy pathfinding and the mechanics of the raids themselves. All the raids last roughly two minutes. Some of them are 90 seconds and others might be a little bit more. When the raid first starts, you want to immediately run out of your base because the enemies will totally ignore your base as long as they can come chase you. 
The hell even killed me? I, I don't even know how I died. What was that? In Grey Dwarf Rock? Because I died, you can see that the trolls are going to town, right? That's because they can't get to me. Whenever the raid starts, you actually don't want to kill the enemies straight away. Because if you kill the enemies while the event is still unfolding, then they're just going to respawn. So what you want to do is run around until the event totally ends, and then you can kill the enemies. You see how that base is falling apart though? That's why the trolls, oof, they really, they have so much range with that stick. So obviously, because the trolls can stand up here, they were attracted to the campfires in that window, and they just totally annihilated it. Luckily, the beds are all over there, so we're still good. Now, once the raid finishes, which will happen after 90 seconds of staying in the red zone, or two minutes, depending on the raid, then you gotta either kill the trolls or lose them. The easiest thing to do is actually just lose the trolls by luring them away from your base. So just keep going away and eventually, eventually you'll get deep enough into a biome that you'll be able to lose the trolls and then just run back to your base and they won't follow you. It's actually a lot easier if your base is next to another biome because the monsters will distract the trolls and then it's really easy to run away. As you saw earlier, those trolls were really destructive. So this base wouldn't help at all against the trolls. They would just come in and within a minute or two, they'd get to the beds and destroy them. But that's okay, because this base is just made to survive the first two raids, which are boars, necks, and gray dwarfs. Way easier to survive. Here is a really simple way that you can make your bases more raid proof. It all has to do with jumping. You see how I can't get into the base unless I jump? That's it. Like, really, if you make things in a way where you have to jump to get in, then the enemies are going to struggle. For example, here's a horde is attacking event. You can already see the goblins running over the hill towards me. All I have to do is go inside my base, and yeah, projectiles are a problem, but look at that. The goblins can't get inside. Another strategy you can use is using gaps in flooring, because this screws up the enemy's pathfinding. As you can see, the goblin, this melee goblin's right here, but he can't get to me because of the pathfinding. And you want a lot of these layers in your base. Like, you want three or four layers of gaps, and also of jumpable areas that you can only get up to by jumping. They will start wailing on stuff, though, if they can't get to you, so keep that in mind. I know, I know, you probably think I'm crazy, but I swear, it's so fun to play Valheim on maximum raid mode. Once you know how to play and you've built a couple bases, this will totally change your base building experience. This maximum raid, high difficulty, no map, no portals playthrough was the single most fun playthrough of Valheim that I've ever had and I've done like seven. Congratulations for making it to the end of the video. Now I'm gonna show you why this mode totally changes the plains and the mountains. You see, most raids can only happen at your bases. In fact, every single raid can only happen at your base, except one. And here it is. This is the event that totally changes the plains and the mountains biome. Because as I mentioned, you get raids every 12 minutes. That means every 12 minutes in the plains, you're gonna get the you're being hunted event. And why does this make the plains easier? Because the wolves are aggressive to goblins, locks, and even deathskeeto. So it becomes way easier to avoid dying because the enemies are constantly distracted by the wolves. Believe it or not, the You Are Being Hunted event is by far the most common event you'll experience because it's the only event that can happen outside of your base. So it's gonna happen all the time. Unfortunately though, in the mountains, you're not gonna be so lucky because the wolves are friendly with almost everything in the mountains. Meaning that when you get the event, you're their main target. This has the effect of making the mountains much harder. 
And the best way to defend against this is to find some high ground and then you literally just hide there until the event ends. You also need to know the timing because you're gonna get this event all the time when you're out exploring. So if you haven't gotten it in the past five or six minutes, you're about to. Do you want YouTube to recommend you more Valheim videos? Well, all you have to do is like this video or any other about Valheim, and that'll tell YouTube to give you more Valheim content. So consider liking this video. You can also rent a dedicated Valheim server using my link, JP Valheim. It's a great way to play with your friends.